Hey everybody, Stephanie here from Sewing with Stephanie. Today I'm going to show you how to drape this gathered neck backless blouse with a raglan sleeve. We've already draped the raglan sleeve in another video, so you can follow along with that video first if you want to drape your raglan sleeve. And then keep watching this series as I show you how to make the raglan sleeve into a blouson sleeve with a cuff how I pattern make the front of this top, and how I sew it together. Ready to get started? Let's go. So if you followed along from this video before, you've already watched how we draped the initial basic raglan sleeve. I'm gonna use the same style lines that I used to create this raglan sleeve drape that are already on my mannequin in order to drape the front of the bodice. Then I'm going to take that raglan sleeve and turn it into a more of a blue sans sleeve with a cuff at the hem. In order to drape the bodice, I'm going to peel back the raglan sleeve so that I can see the design lines cutting across the neck, the front of the bodice, and underneath the arm so, so that I know where I'm draping to. Then I can match that drape back to make sure it perfectly matches up with my bodice. The great thing about this top is that since it's backless, we only have to drape the front top, but there are a few intricacies that we're going to add some volume into the neck and the waist that'll be cinched in by a belt. As usual, I'm going to start off with a large piece of muslin with the grain line already marked off. We only need to drape one side of this bodice because it's going to be mirror image cut on fold, but I'm going to put the grain line right up to that center line, just so we know that part will be right on center. And then I'll pin at the top of the neck, and then I'll smooth it down to the center front and pin down to the center front. Maybe placing a few more pins along the bust bridge. So taking a look back at the top of this design, for my sketch, I want to put in a neck band at the top, and the design line that I have currently in here is a little bit lower of a neck. So actually, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna raise up that design line to be just at the base of the neck so that I can easily create another piece that attaches to it to create that neck band. And then I'm gonna repin my muslin back up all the way to the pin at the top. Now I have my grain line marked along the center front, and what I need to do is add in the fullness that gathers at the neck that will cinch in and throw the fullness into the hemline. So in order to do that, I'm going to just pinch in a little bit of fabric, maybe like half inch on either, or quarter inch on either side, which is a half inch. And I'm going to place a pin just on the other side of it. Then I'm going to do it again. So then I'm just going to pin along that neckline, bringing in tiny pleats almost, that when we sew it, are gonna look like gathers. Now that I have the neckline all pinned up, I kind of wanna pull the fabric in here to see what that additional fullness is doing to the bodice and if I like it. I'm keeping the center front pinned for now because I wanna make sure that part stays on the green as I assess, but I can release a few more pins. In order to decide if we like this fullness, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use my hands to cinch it in. This is the way the design is gonna look with the satin belt attached. So I wanna make sure that I like the amount of fullness once you cinch it in. And I do think I like that. It's subtle. And then if you were to have it unbelted and unpinned, it has a nice kind of cascading shape without being too, too full and too tense like. Now, as usual in draping, I'm gonna take my pen and mark off the design lines that are already in here in the top. And then I'm gonna trim the fabric a little closer to these design lines, then I'm gonna just flatten out this fabric right along that raglan line. And then let's trim up the center front here. And now that we've pinned up just a few pins on the raglan, I'm gonna continue to drape that raglan without pulling too tight because I don't want to then pull up and lose the fullness at the front. I'm really just letting the fabric tell me where it wants to be draped. Now, this design is backless, but I am going to extend the front panel a little further than just the side seam to provide a little bit more coverage. I'm gonna take it up maybe a little bit further in that armhole and then let it cascade down the side back of the body. So let me pin that. If you can see here, and I'll highlight, you can see that the grain line is now kicking forward at that side seam. And that's because we've added all of the fullness into the front and not as much fullness on the side back. So what that's doing is that's pushing the fabric towards the fullness. That's something to keep in mind if you choose a fabric that has a stripe or plaid, something where it's very obvious that that material is kicking. 
For me, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna choose a very kind of dainty floral. Um, but it's something to keep in mind when you are draping because you have to think about how that end fabric is going to look on this design. Before I do any more, I'm gonna trim away this raglan sleeve just to get a little closer to the underarm. Now that I've done that, I can kind of assess it a little better, assess that shape, maybe mark off on the raglan shape. And as usual, I'm going to cut to those pins. and mark off that design line. I'm gonna create a notch here for the side. Even though there won't be a side seam here, that's where the underarm of the raglan is gonna hit, and I wanna make sure that matches up perfectly. And then I'm gonna continue my design up maybe a few inches. So I'm just playing around here and kind of letting the fabric tell me where it wants to hang. I'm not pulling it or pushing it anywhere. I'm just kind of letting it show me where it wants to hang so that I can smooth down and draw that design line. I'm thinking that I'm actually gonna take it up a little further, casually drop that line down. Now we have the back lightly pinned and we can see how everything's hanging. Do we like it hanging smooth? Do we like how the front is kicking? If I was to pinch this in with the belt, as we will be doing, does that provide the amount of coverage that I want while still giving an open back? It actually has a bit more coverage than I was originally intending, but I think I kind of like that. Um, I think it's gonna provide more coverage on the side. Don't you just love when somebody calls in the middle of while you're videotaping and your videotape shuts off? So lesson to me, I need to put it on airplane mode. However, we have missed a little bit of what I draped, of the progress of what I draped. Basically, I um, decided that I want this top to end right at the hip line, which I already have marked off. If you decide that you want your top to be longer or shorter, then I would suggest putting in that design line prior to draping so that you can easily smooth the fabric over and mark off the hem. Then I trimmed it up, both the center front and the hem line, and really assessed the shape of the design without the waistband. Then we have to talk about the neck. Although we can wait on draping the waistband until later, draping the neckband is very important before you take the bodice off. Because we have the gathers at the neckline, we need to know how big or small to gather that piece of fabric up, and we can mark that off by using the neckband. So I drape the neckband very similar to how you would drape a basic collar. I have a video for that, and I will definitely put a link to that below. But you can see that really what I'm doing is marking off the center front instead of the center back neck and then molding the fabric from there. Just trimming and cutting as I go to make sure there's no pulls around the neck. I am just about done marking this off and I want to make a few notes. So I have a lot of different drapes on my mannequin right now. I am going to make sure that on this neck band, I don't need to assess the full length of it at the moment, but I need to assess a few things. So I need to make sure that I mark off on the neckband where the back of the raglan sleeve hits, where the center of the raglan sleeve hits, right next to the shoulder, the front of the raglan sleeve hits, and then I would also suggest putting in one or two notch marks and pairing them up with your bodice so that you can see how much to, to gather in. So this neckband's gonna look a little crazy because it has tons of notches all over it and it's really just as a guide to show you making sure that you are, when you're sewing, matching it up correctly. And then we can make it as long as we want. The neckband could just stop and have a hook and eye closure at the neck. I'm gonna make it longer and add a nice bow tie, but I can't really do that with only one side draped. So I can play around with that length later. The last thing to do is kind of mark off the height that you want the neckband. So I'm gonna mark up a few places, two and a half inches. Okay, did you think you were done? Not yet. Now that we have the sleeve already sitting here pinned to the back of your mannequin, it's crucial to take that sleeve back and make sure everything is lining up from the sleeve into the bodice, into the neck, into the underarm, Take it back, make sure that you like the way it's hanging. For me, I have to remember that this sleeve drape is really just a basic sloper shape. I'm gonna go back and pattern make that. And in the next video, 
um, to show you how to create that Busan sleeve with a cuff. And then I'm going to attach it and mark it into my bodice. But one more thing, I want to make sure that I mark off a couple notches on both sides. One notch for the front, and then I'm going to do two for the back, right under here, just so I know where that the back of the bodice is going to hit the back of the sleeve. Thanks so much for following along today as we drape this backless gathered neck top. It's really going to be a very beautiful blouse when we're done and we're finished pattern making the sleeve. And by now, if you've been watching all my videos, you're probably an expert and you can do these without the videos anyway. But if not, keep following this series as we create and sew together this beautiful top. Thanks so much. See you around soon. Hey everybody, Stephanie here from Sewing with Stephanie. Today I'm going to show you how to drape this gathered neck backless blouse with a raglan sleeve. We've already draped the raglan sleeve in another video, so you can follow along with that video first if you want to drape your raglan sleeve. And then keep watching this series as I show you how to make the raglan sleeve into a blouson sleeve with a cuff, how I pattern make the front of this top, and how I sew it together. Ready to get started? Let's go!